What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the workshop. I hope you're all keeping well. Now something a little different in this video, I'm installing a solar PV system on my house. So a bunch of you guys messaged me and said you'd be really interested in knowing more about this after I shared it on Instagram. So I'm going to do a video on it. And in light of skyrocketing energy prices that we are living at the minute, these systems are starting to make a lot more sense. So what I'm going to do in this video is give you a look at a solar PV system, the actual kit, what it comes with, what the components look like and how they all go together. I'm also going to cover some of the rules and regulations in Ireland and things that you should consider if you're going to install one of these solar PV systems. So I'll cover some of the paperwork, show you some of the rules and regulations, show you the actual kit and what it comes with and I'm going to do an update video of all this operating then and I'll show you exactly what I'm getting for my solar PV system. So let's do it. Now just before we crack on, I want to quickly thank the sponsor of today's video and that is Tradeify. Now Tradeify is a complete job management platform designed specifically for self-employed tradespeople. So if you're in the trades, plumber, carpenter, electrician, painter, decorator, and you struggle with your office work, I highly recommend you check this out. I use it, I'm over 16 years as a self-employed electrician and it saves me countless hours and headaches every week with my office work. It's all your administration in one place, it's desktop and mobile based so you can carry your office with you in your pocket and it makes it super simple to generate professional looking documents such as quotations and invoices, even track all that invoice, manage your cash flow, manage a small crew through it, manage your timesheets, manage your job flow, all that it does and much, much more. So I highly recommend it guys if you are struggling with your office work, definitely check it out. So I will link it in the description below. There's a 14 day free trial. You can play around with the full job management platform, see how it works for you and your business. And there's also a promo code man and shed, which gives you 50% off for your first three months. So that will all be linked below. I highly recommend recommend you check it out guys if you're on the tools all day and you struggle with that office work you're in the trades check out Tradeify. So let's crack on with the solar panels. Okay, so you're thinking about installing a solar PV system. Well, there's a couple of things you need to consider before you do. Mainly, is your house suitable to put in a solar PV system? So, do you have the space on your roof for the particular system that you wish to put in? Is your roof full of vents, skylights, dormer windows, that kind of thing? That would prevent you from putting panels over the top of them. So you might not have enough space on your roof. So that's the first thing you want to check out. If you have a large enough space or land around your house, you can build a freestanding array. Next thing you want to think about is the orientation of your house. Is your house south facing? That is the optimal thing. Can you put an array in your garden that's south facing? That's going to give you most of the light, at least in the northern hemisphere, hitting those panels all day. But if your house is not south facing, don't worry. My house isn't. My front of my house faces west. The back of my house faces east. So I can split my panels front and back to get me the maximum output from this. It's not going to be optimum, but it's still going to work pretty well in my uh, instance. So get onto your installer, ask those type of questions. They'll be able to tell you roughly what kind of output you will get. There's actually a website you can go to. I will link it below it. You can put in all your details and it will tell you um, what you can expect to get from the direction your house is facing and the type of system you are putting in. So I will link resources below in the comments. Next thing you should think about is your roof. How old is your house? How structurally sound is the roof on your house? These are about 20 kilos a piece. So you're adding a lot of weight to the roof. So if you have a new Build, you should be fine if it's an older house like my house which is well over 100 years old it's an old Irish cottage however the roof was recently redone so I know it's structurally sound so that's something else you must consider before you're thinking about putting in one of these systems you're also going to need room for all the electrics that comes with this the inverter and so, so on maybe you're putting in a battery pack you will need a space in your house to um, put that as well. I will show you my particular setup shortly in this video when I take you inside into the house. So a couple of things you need to consider. Is your house suitable for solar? If you answer yes to all those things, then by all means, start looking into it. Start contacting some solar installers in your area. Now in Ireland, you must be a registered electrical contactor contractor to install a solar PV system that's going to connect to the grid. You cannot DIY one of these systems. So that's the first thing I will say to you. I am a registered electrical contractor. That's why I can put the system on my own house. I can fill out all the paperwork and provide all the certification so that this can be connected to the grid. So whoever you contact, they will have to be registered um, with Safe Electric. And if you are applying for a grant, they will also have to be registered with the SEAI as well in order to get you with a grant for that system. So 
that's just a couple of things to consider. Without further ado, let's actually look at the kit itself. Okay, so we're gonna jump in and look at my kit. I'm gonna go through all the component parts and give you guys a close up of them, just so you guys understand what's involved and what these kits are actually made up of. So the first thing we're gonna look at is the panels. Now, I'll also address more considerations you need to have as we're moving through, but we might as well move through the video and look at the component parts. So these particular panels are the Longi panels, they're the black panels. Um, the black panels look a lot nicer. You can get the ones where you see the actual individual cells would have all the white outlines. Now I am told the white outlines are slightly more efficient and they're cheaper panels as well. The hotter these panels get, the less efficient they operate. So the black panel obviously will absorb more heat if you have the white lines in between all the cells that will reflect a bit more heat. However, in Ireland, I don't think that's gonna to be too much of a problem. The temperatures don't get too extreme in Ireland, so uh, we should be good to go. So these are 405 watts a piece. Now I should point out as well that the ratings of any panel will be under optimum conditions in the factory. So at about 25 degrees Celsius and optimum light conditions, this will put out about 405 watts. I'm probably rarely going to achieve that in Ireland, especially in the winter time, so I'll only be getting a percentage of that output. In the best days of summer in Ireland, I might get close to the maximum output of these particular panels. So, like I said, they're 20 kilos a piece. Width-wise, they are 1 meter 13 and height wise they are 1 meter 70. That's 67 inches by, let's get the measuring tape out again. 45 inches across. So you can see they are quite big indeed and they are 20 kilos. So they're an aluminum frame. I'm just gonna spin them around and show you guys the back of them. So we have a positive and negative connection and you just daisy chain all these together so they're interlinked. I have a total of 14 panels. So 14 times 405 is 5,670 or a 5.6 kilo, 67 kilowatt potential system. They will be 14 panels, like I said, and it will be done in two rows of seven. So I'll have two loops, so positive and negative, in and out uh, to seven and to the other seven. So a total of two loops. I'll show you that inside, how that affects the electrics. But that's a kind of a look at the panels and you can kind of, guys can see it. I'll give you a couple of close-up shots of them so you can see what to expect. But they're 20 kilos, they're quite tall. I'm six foot two and you can see me standing beside the panel. When these are up on a roof and you're driving by the house, it's kind of hard to get a perspective on them. But when you see them beside somebody, you can see they are quite large indeed. So that's my particular panel. Okay, so just before we move on from the panels, another thing you should consider is shadows. So is your house overlooked by larger buildings or even by trees? Do they cast shadows across your roof? That will reduce the efficiency of your panels. It will reduce the efficiency and the output of your particular system, what you can actually get out of it. So if you have multiple chimneys on your house, for instance, when the sun is moving around your house, does it cast a shadow down your roof? Does that shadow move across your particular panels? Um, like I said, is there trees or tall buildings either side of your house do that? Block, do they block out the sunlight? That's something you will have to consider as well. If you have sunlight kind of all day on your roof, that's the optimum. So shadows are another enemy of output, so something else to consider. Okay guys, so next we're going to look at is the hardware, all the bits and pieces that come with this particular kit to get those panels up and mounted on that roof. So I'll show you all the individual components. Now, this is where you need to make another consider consideration. What type of roof do you have? My particular roof on my cottage is a slate roof. If you have a tile roof, you will need slightly different brackets. So you will have to specify the type of roof that you have when you are buying the kit because the brackets are slightly different depending on what is on your roof. But if you're getting an actual qualified installer to install this, they will provide you with all this kit and you don't have to worry about it. But if you are ordering your kit yourself, you will have to make sure that you get the right kit to suit your particular roof. So I'll get you a close up on this stuff. I'll show you how it all goes together. It's quite simple indeed. Okay guys, so very quickly, let's look at the parts. So these are the actual brackets. These are galvanized steel brackets. These will have to be mounted onto the roof joists. So I will have to find the timbers in order to support this. So a slate roof is a little bit harder to work on than a tile roof. For a tile roof, you can just push up the tiles and you can find the actual individual uh, timbers. Whereas I have to pull slates off my roof. I have to strip my roof back a bit in order to find the timbers and fix these too. So these have to be fixed with these lag stainless steel lag bolts directly to the timber. I will then have to cut the tiles in around them and you get one of these then to cover over your 
um, bracket just like that. So that will sit under the slate. This section here will have to be cut from the tiles. So that's all you will see. I'll roll in a picture now so you guys can see the finished installation. There's some foam inserts then just to plug these up and some timbers just to support it so that when you stand on this frame, it doesn't crack any of the surrounding slates. So nice and simple. Once you get all your brackets in place, then you fit on your aluminium rails. And this is what your particular um, panels will bolt to. So let me show you how that works. Okay guys, so this is the piece of aluminium. This is the main part of the rail system that all the things bolt to. So you bolt these to your brackets and you bolt your panels to this rail. So you can see on the back, we have a T-track. You guys will know how that works. If you're familiar with Unistrot or T-tracks or anything in woodworking, you will know exactly how T-tracks work. So you get a couple of T-bolts. They click in there like that. You then bolt this to your bracket that's sticking out of your roof, making sure you put in enough of these so that everything is nice and supported. Once your rail system is bolted in place, it's very, very simple then to uh, click on your actual panels. So you have a kind of a more open slot in the front, which these panel clips actually sit into. So you just push that down. It's kind of spring loaded. So when you pull these back up, they narrow in and when you screw that bolt down, it pulls this piece up through these, splaying these out and I'll see if I can just do this now. It's going to slot it in the end here. So pull that back, slot that in. That then clips into the bracket. I can slide this up and down. These catch the edge of my panel. I tighten up the Allen bolt. It pulls that piece up and then locks this onto the frame and locks your panels in place. It's quite simple. You have two rails per panel. So I'll have two rails, one rail top and bottom, and you can join these together to continue on your rail in as well. You get the joiners with them. Very same as the Unistrut joiners, only these are made from aluminium. They're not steel. They're not nearly as robust or as heavy as Unistrut, but uh, you don't want any extra weight on your roof. So these are plenty strong to do the job. So nice and simple, clip these in, bolt that down. This then clamps your panels to the rail and the brackets and stuff are pretty self-explanatory. So that's essentially the kit for getting this it's on the roof. The hardest part, like I said, is finding the timbers. Once you have the timbers found and you have all your brackets in place, it's just a case of bolted all together like a big Meccano set. Okay guys, so that was just a quick look at some of the hardware, some of the fixtures and fittings. It's very, very simple. It's very basic. It's just bolted together. There's nothing to it. Once you get your spacings right and you're onto the timbers, uh, this stuff literally just bolts together and you clamp those panels straight onto your roof. Now, you are working from heights, so be ultra, ultra careful. Have scaffold in place, have proper roof ladders, tie yourself off, take all the precautions. If you're not competent to do that kind of work, do not work from heights. A fall from three feet, if you hit your head, will kill you. So falling from a roof, is a, uh, you know, it's, it's, you do not want that to happen. So make sure you're competent to do something. Don't rush out, buy yourself a solar PV kit and start trying to throw these things up on the roof. Um, if you're not, um, like I said, competent to do so, get in the professionals to do it for you. But if you are gonna buy this kit yourself, if you are a registered electric contractor or if in your country you're allowed to do a DIY project, then you can see these brackets are pretty much the same the world over. Now, I'm gonna take a quick look at some of the forms you have to fill out in order to put one of these systems onto the grid in Ireland. So if you're thinking about buying this particular kit or any particular kit and you want to install it to the grid, you're going to have to fill out these forms. There's going to be declarations of conformity and some compliance documents and you have to make sure it conforms uh, to the NSI uh, rules and regulations. You cannot just go out and buy any kit you want online and stick it in and expect to be able to attach that to the national grid. You will not be allowed. It must conform to all the regulations before you can connect that to the grid and you have to declare that that is absolutely the case. So let's have a look at these documents. I'll go through them briefly and then we will go inside and I'll show you my electrical installation. Okay, first things first, the kit that you buy must conform to the NSI rules and regulations. Like I said, this is the book that governs the electrical industry in Ireland and everything I install, no matter what it is, has to conform to the rules and regulations that are in here. And this new edition, which was released this year or in 2020 actually, um, this one has everything you need to know about solar panels. So any of my electrician friends watching, everything you need to know about rules and regulations are contained in here and the kit you buy has to conform to these standards. So that's the first thing I will say. So 
when you buy your particular kit, the supplier who supplies your kit will be able to give you these documents. So let me just zoom in on these particular ones. These are pertaining to my particular inverter. Okay, so this is one of the forms I have to send away with my application. This is the declaration of conformity and this uh, pertains to the particular model inverter I have. And this is the test record sheet for that inverter, which is supplied by the manufacturer. So this just states that it conforms to the standard EN50549, which is relevant for me here in Ireland and it has all the disconnection times for that inverter if you get under voltages or over voltage. Remember you're connecting your solar PV system to the national grid so you don't want to be sending over voltages and under voltages out on the grid. Uh, anything you connect must conform and work with the grid. So just remember whatever you connect you're connecting to the grid so you cannot uh, you know risk damaging anything out there on the grid or potentially killing someone that's working on the grid as well. So without getting super in depth into the technical aspect of this. It's just a declaration conformity. My particular inverter serial number is in there. It conforms to the right standards and this is the list that my particular energy supplier wants to see that it conforms to. The other document I have then is the compliance document and again this just contains all the different test records, everything about the inverter and stuff so I'll send that away with the forms as well. So like I said your supplier will supply you with these or if you have a professional installer they will do all this for you so you won't have to worry about it but for any of my electrician friends working in Ireland and you guys want to do this for yourself uh, this is what you will need to send away so let's take a look at the forms Okay, so the first form I have to fill out is an NC6 form and this is a micro generation notification. So the SB networks are responsible for the national grid so they have to be informed you intend on connecting micro generation to the grid. And it's just very basic and very simple. So name, address, mobile number, uh, email address, air code, not much more to it. You have to then give the installers details. So it has to be a registered electrical contractor. I just put my own details in there because I am a registered electrical contractor. MPRN number, that's the meter point reference number for my particular house and then I just put in my details here so it's single phase it's solar PV the manufacturer which is Geelong or Solace at uh, a manufacturer's reference number so I just put in the serial number of my particular inverter my inverter capacity which is 6 kVA that's another thing I have to point out is that the maximum you are allowed in a domestic situation in Ireland is a 6 kVA inverter so you can't export any more than 6 kVA to the grid without special uh, applications and and in the domestic ins installation, it's 6 kVA or 11 kVA three phase. So storage behind our generation behind my inverter, 5.67 kilowatts. That's the potential of my system with all my panels. I have the storage, which I'm putting in a battery. So it's a 2.4 uh, kilowatt battery and it's 2.2 uh, kilowatts usable output. And uh, then you just confirm that it conforms to all the standards. You just tick yes on those. And the second form you have to fill out then is the NC6-01-R7. And this is your installer will inform, fill it out for you. So again, it's just a site address, MPRN number, the microgeneration manufacturer, the model number again. You have a test type certificate. So that's the test certificate which I just showed you for the type of inverter you are installing single or three phase and then you conform or you just mark yes in all these boxes that it conforms to all this so the shut off times for over voltages and under voltages and the different conditions you have to type, uh, put yes in for and just confirm that that it's uh, everything is good so it conforms to this you will be sending that sort away and then it's just the details of the installer so in my case it's all my details from my company and that gets sent away as well and once they are sent away if you don't hear back from them within 20 days telling you you can't install it you are good to go so that's the documentation guys and a little bit, few more facts hopefully that helps anybody in Ireland out who is thinking of installing this stuff like I said if you're getting a professional installer they'll probably take care of all this for you but if you're an electrician working in Ireland this is what we have to do so let's get on inside now and look at my installation. Okay guys so here we are up in my attic now it's pretty hard to film because it's a pretty small space but you will need this kind of size space in order to put in all the equipment for your particular solar panels. I'm putting my up in the attic my solar panels will be going out on this roof and out on the opposite roof there so it's, everything is nice and close. So there is a 6 kVA inverter it's a solace inverter. I also have a panel here containing my uh, 
uh, Pylon Tech US 2000C battery. So another thing you guys need to consider is do you want to put in battery storage or not? Um, it depends on the size of system you can put in, how many panels you can fit on your roof. If you're generating any excess electricity that you can send and charge a battery that you can use then overnight when obviously the sun has gone down then it's a good idea. But if your system's not big enough where you'll have any excess electricity then it's pointless spending all that money on a battery. You can if you're on different tariffs, let's say if your night electricity is way cheaper than your daytime electricity, you can put in several batteries, charge those batteries from the grid at night and then use those batteries during the day when the electricity is more expensive so you can kind of offset your bills that way. However, batteries are quite expensive and you really want to do some calculations before you make that decision. But my particular kit is, like I said, a 5.67 uh, kilowatt system. So in the summertime, I should have plenty of excess electricity to charge batteries. So I started off with one battery. I'll see how that goes. And if I need to add another battery down the road, I will. So let me get you in just for a close up on this. I'll show you what comes with the kit, what you actually have to install um, without telling you how, how to install all this, because that's a technical video. Just give you guys a quick idea of what's involved. Okay guys, I have you set up. I can't quite get the entire installation in shot here, but I'll try and take you through it piece by piece just so you guys can see what everything is for and what it actually does and what actually came with this particular kit. It's not going to be a super technical video, but I'll explain what everything is. So starting off here with the Pro Dielectric, this is the Fireman switch as they are known. So this is an automatic switch off. So if this ever loses power or if the power is ever switched off, this will isolate the panels on the roof. So like I said to you, I have two loops. So I have two loops in and two loops out. So I have my seven panels on one loop and my other seven panels on the other loop. And this, if the power ever goes off, this will shut down or break those loops coming from the panel. So it shuts off the DC into the inverter. So then the inverter cannot send any AC back to the grid. And that's the unfortunate thing with this system, but it is a safety mechanism. It is regulation. It has to be installed. If the power ever goes off, you cannot backfeed the network or the grid. If somebody's out there trying to repair something on the grid and you're backfeeding it, that's dangerous. You can potentially kill somebody. So the disadvantage of having a grid connected system is when the power goes off, so do your solar panels. So it's not like your solar panels are still running and you still have power even though the power goes off. So it's not like a backup generator. It cannot work like that. It has to self isolate. That's a regulation. So that's what that is. It's an automatic switch that if the power ever goes off, it breaks the loop coming from the solar panels to the inverter. Next up here then I have, that's just a little spore outlet to power this guy. So it's a little AC supply for the actual fireman switch. So when obviously when this goes off, this drops out like I've just explained. Next over then we have our DC isolator. So that isolates my two loops again. So that isolates the DC from the inverter. This this is the AC isolator. So that isolates the AC coming from the grid and from the inverter. So it's on the same cable. So from my consumer unit or my fuse board, whatever way you want to call it, I have a cable which feeds this AC. So it feeds the inverter and the inverter also feeds the grid back through the same cable. So that's DC isolation, AC isolation, automatic foreman switch. So over here, Okay, so moving over to this side, then I have the main inverter itself. So this is the Solus inverter. It's a six kVA inverter, like I explained already. And if you've kind of skipped the actual documentation part of this video, you cannot have more than a six kVA inverter in a domestic situation in Ireland. Six kVA single phase, 11 kVA three phase, no more than that can be fed back to the grid. So it doesn't matter how many panels I put out on my roof, this inverter will never send more than six kVA back to the grid. And I can't just put any amount of panels I want into this either. It has a set limit. I think I can put 11 panels per string with this particular inverter but it this guarantees that no more than 6 kVA ever gets sent back to the grid and it also conforms then to all the regulations for the disconnection times for over voltages and under voltages and all that stuff that I explained in the um, regulation part of the video or documentation part of the video. So this conforms to all the standards. So it just has a wireless data logger. So it connects to the internet so you can look at your app and see all the things. Um, I will do an update video when this whole system is up and running. And I'll tell you exactly how it's operating. Um, I will not tell you guys any lies. If it doesn't work, I will let you know. If it's overperforming, I will let you guys know. So that'll be an update video, but that's the inverter anyway. Um, again, you have two loops in. This is a hybrid inverter. So I also have my battery positive and negative coming off this. So 
I can uh, feed a battery through this inverter. So if I'm putting in a battery system, it'll have to be a hybrid inverter. A standard inverter will have no battery connection. And then it's just my AC uh, in here for the grid. Like I said, that's just a um, data logger which connects to the internet or to your Wi-Fi. I have a cable then over to a little small kilowatt hour meter here, which I can just look at all my information on should I so need it. And then down here, then we have the isolation for the battery. So we have a 125 amp breaker here for my battery connections and that's all DC. And you can see I have stickers on everything. So all these stickers have to be put in place. So you have to have the warning high voltage DC. You have to have your AC supply kill switch, your solar panel kill switch. Everything has to be labeled. The fuse board in the house now or the consumer units in the house must also be labeled. You must let everybody know that there is now two supplies to your consumer unit from your uh, solar panels and from the grid. The same with the meter cabinet outside that has to have the sticker in it as well and you have to have on both those stickers where all the emergency isolation is. In my case it's in my attic so that all has to be labelled as well. So that's basically the system in the attic. That's the kind of space you need to install it. Now let me show you my actual heat uh, controller that I've installed for this system as well. A couple of things I should point out just before we go down is that everything here must be properly earthed as well. That's part of the regulation. So I have a 10 square earth onto the inverter. You can see another 10 square earth cable right here. So this panel for the battery has to be fully bonded and earthed and so does the battery. So your entire system has to be earthed properly. Again, that's all part of the regulations. I also have a CT from this meter clamped around my mains live coming into the building. So that's how I get my readings there. And I have a second CT then for the unit. I'm gonna show you now below. So let's go and have a look at that. Okay guys, this is my heat controller that I've installed. This doesn't come part of the kit. This is an optional extra that you can install once you have solar panels in place. This is the My Energy Eddy, and this controls basically my um, water heater or my immersion. So I have an isolator for it here, which just kills the unit, and it feeds then my immersion switch so I can select between the two elements, sink and bat, in the hot water tank, and it gives me a free tank of hot water if I have uh, excess electricity. So I can turn it on anytime I want, and just turn on my hot water heater if I want, or this will work automatically when the solar panels are generating excess electricity. It'll switch this on. Rather than sending it back to the grid, it will heat my water tank for me for essentially for free. So I'll give you a close up of the screen. Now you can't really see it from here, and you guys can see how it works. Okay guys, so here's a close up of the screen so you can see all the details on it. So you can see I'm pulling uh, 100 watts or 0.1 of a kilowatt from the grid and the house is pretty sad looking because I'm not taking anything from my solar panels. They're obviously not connected yet. And here's my water heater with the shower symbol on it. And that's drawing zero kilowatts at the minute. So if I have uh, excess electricity coming from my solar panels, it will send it to my water heater through this unit and give me a free tank of hot water. And I can check all my information and stuff on it through this as well. It's also done wordlessly if I want. You have to get a CT from your mains cable back to here or you can do it wordlessly with what's called a Harvey controller as well. And like I said, it ties in with your sappy car charger. So I can hit boost and turn on my water heater. So there's my water heater now turning on and you should see the kilowatt start to rise up there. So you can see I'm pulling more and more from the grid and my water heater is turning on. So it ramps it up slowly. You can see that should get up to in around two kilowatts. And my water heater is heating. So at any time during day or night, I can just hit the boost function to give me a tank of hot water. But ideally, I never want to be using it from the grid. I want the sun to heat my tank hot water. And that's essentially what this does. It's just an automatic switch monitoring your usage from the grid and from the solar panels and give you a free tank of hot water. So that's the My Energy Eddy. Okay guys, so there you go. That is my particular system. That is a good look at a solar PV kit and what you guys can expect, uh, how it all kind of goes together. Hopefully it has answered some questions for you guys if you're um, thinking about installing a solar PV kit. I suppose the other consideration is the cost of getting one of these installed. Um, get multiple quotations from multiple installers. Some people are ripping people off out there. I've seen some silly quotes. Um, in around 13,000 to have this panel, this a system like mine installed would be the the max that I would be paying. Anything more than that, I think you're starting to get ripped off. And remember, there's a 
when you put install uh, the biggest system you can, there's up to a maximum of 2,400 euros uh, cash back or a grant available to install this system in Ireland. So uh, make sure you get your grant sorted as well. You will have to do the calculations yourself, guys, to see whether it's worth paying out to get this installed. Um, if you'll only know that for yourselves. Um, with the rising or the skyrocketing uh, energy prices now, these things are starting to make a lot more sense. I'm in a very, very lucky and privileged position because I am a registered electrical contractor and I can do all the work myself. I just got this kit. I paid. I got it at trade price, so um, it's a serious reduction for me. So it doesn't cost me anything to install the kit. I'm installing it myself. So I'm in a very very, very lucky position so it makes perfect sense for me to put this in at the current uh, price of energy because I'll get a return on this in a couple of years where it could be six to seven years at current energy prices if you got somebody to install one of these kits so just do your research make sure you get multiple quotes and make sure when you get your multiple quotes that you're comparing like for like so check the quality of the panels you're getting make sure they come with manufacturers warranties most of them are guaranteed for 20 years they will last a lot longer than that they just guarantee them for operating for 20 years they will diminish over the years the efficiency of these things drop so it should drop down to no more than 80 percent of good panels after 20 years they should still be operating at about 80 percent of what their maximum capacity is but uh, yeah that's it guys again any comments any questions you want to ask me about this get in the comments section below anything you think i haven't covered anything you want to know um, i will uh, try and get back to you as best i can i will link to absolutely everything i can link to i will link to where i bought these panels as well again this is not sponsored this is i bought these with my own money i did not get anything from a manufacturer but i will still link them below it to exactly where i bought my particular kit you guys can look that up if you so choose and all the other resources will be linked in there as well so yeah like i said comments and questions anything you want to know i will do a follow-up video on these panels um, I will let you know exactly how it's operating, whether it's working properly or not. I will show you warts and all exactly what I'm getting in a few months time. So that's it guys, I'm going to get out of here now. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if it's been helpful to you. Um, if you're new here, think about subscribing. I can do more of these type of videos if you guys are interested as well. So, but for now, I'm going to get out of here. Hopefully the weather comes back right again so I can get my panels up on the roof because it's been heavy rain for the last week. and for next week as well so we'll see and as soon as these are out of the workshop i can start doing projects again so fingers crossed for that until the next one guys take it easy